Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary here in Seattle Public Schools. This is a fifth grade reading lesson, and in your Making Meaning book, we are on Unit 9, Week 3, Day 2. This lesson is all about synthesizing ideas, expressing opinions, and backing up your opinions with evidence. The topic we're expressing our opinion about this week is year round school. We read this article in the last lesson called The Pros and Cons of Year-Round Schools. It told us all about the different reasons for the pros and the different reasons against the cons having school all year round without a summer break. Some of the pros were there's less summer brain drain and more time to learn, schools save money, and there's more flexibility for families. The cons were there's no proven gains in academic achievement. There's no long summer break to relax, be with friends and family, or go to camp. And the costs of running year round schools are greater. Today we're gonna to read an article called Year Round School on Fora by Chance T from Imperial, Nebraska. Now the last article gave us both sides of the debate, but this one is going to have only one side. And you may have guessed it, the author is for having year-round school. We're gonna start reading together, and I want you to think about the different arguments he's making for why we should have year-round school. Year-round school, I'm for it, by Chance T from Imperial, Nebraska. Summer is awesome. But after a couple of months, it's time for school again. You walk into class that first day back and hear, pop quiz. Let's see what you know. It's always difficult to start a new school year after a long summer break. But if you go to a year round school, that first day back is a lot easier. I believe all kids should go to year round schools. One argument against year-round schooling is that you and your family can't take long trips over summer vacation. True, you might not get to take a three-week trip, but who does? Typically, and typically just means normally, typically a family vacation is a week or two. If you go to a year-round school, you can take three or even four short trips during the year one during each break. You can see more places that way. What arguments does Chance make in the first part of the essay for why students should attend year-round schools? We're gonna to turn to a partner. And remember, your partner can be a friend or a family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal. And it can also just be someone you're calling on your imaginary phone. Also, if you are more comfortable speaking a language other than English, feel free to speak whatever language you want. But go ahead and ask this question to your partner. What arguments does Chance make in the first part of the essay for why students should attend year-round school? You might have said a few things. We're gonna add them to our list of pros for arguments for year-round school. Maybe you said that according to chance, the first day back is easier if you go to a year-round school. You also could have said that you can take three or four short trips and see more places if you have year-round school where there's more breaks. Here's a caption. A study showed that after completing a year of year-round school, 79% of students were in favor of this year-round calendar. 
Let's keep reading. I know the idea of going to school year-round sounds pretty awful to some of you, but kids who go to year-round schools seem to like it. Elizabeth Palmer and Amy Bemis, authors of Year-Round Education, have done research on year-round schools. They said, the results indicated that after one year of experiencing a 60-15 calendar, 60 days of school, followed by 15 days of vacation, students felt more positively about year-round education. Palmer and Bemis found that 53% of students in the study favored year-round education during the summer before implementation, while 79% favored it at the end of the first year. That means that after the kids in the study tried a year-round school schedule for a year, more of them were for it. Another argument against year-round schooling is that there are fewer days of learning because there are so many breaks. Just when you're getting excited about learning something, it's time for a break. But if you look closely, you will see that actual learning time is the same in a year-round school. And after each break, the students are refreshed and more ready to listen and learn. What arguments does Chance make in the part you just heard for why students should attend year-round schools? Turn to your partner. There are a few different things you could have said, and we'll add those to our pros column. Maybe you said, after kids in a study tried it for a year, more of them liked year-round school. You also could have said that learning time in year-round school is the same as traditional school. Let's keep reading. Also, Students in year-round schools don't have to relearn what they forgot over the summer. Donald Beggs, a former assistant professor at Southern Illinois University, and Albert Hianomas, a former professor at the University of Iowa, researched summer learning and found that there were consistent losses in math and language skills. And that means that students forgot or their academic ability went down in math and reading and writing. There were consistent losses in math and language skills during the traditional summer break. I feel that year-round schooling would benefit all students. Kids would have more vacations and would learn more because they wouldn't have to relearn the information they had forgotten after long summer breaks. What other arguments does Chance make for why students should attend year-round schools? Turn to your partner. We might have said that Chance argues that students return to school refreshed and more ready to learn. Here's the last photograph and caption. 
Year-round schooling can provide families with more opportunities to spend time together throughout the year. We're going to reread this article by ourselves. And I want you to think about these questions as you're rereading. First, do you agree or disagree with the opinion expressed in the essay? Next, what part of the essay supports your opinion? Or what part makes you disagree? Why? And last, did your opinion change during the second reading? Why or why not? Remember, anytime you find evidence to support or disagree with your opinion, make a note of it in your head. Let's start rereading by ourselves. Now let's answer some questions about your opinions on this essay. Do you agree or disagree with chance and why? Hmm. Well, you could agree and support your own schools, or you could disagree and be against them. And there are lots of different reasons for both opinions. Maybe you agree with Chance that year-round schools are a good thing because you would like to have three or four smaller breaks throughout the year. But maybe you disagree with Chance because you like having a long summer because you go to camp or take long vacations with relatives. What did you read in the essay? or think about that supports your opinion. Hmm. You could point to so many different parts of the essay to find evidence that supports your opinion. Maybe you found this study that says that 79% of students that had year-round school decided it was a really good thing and supported it. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. Here are the instructions. 
you're going to pick anything you want to read. So a book of any genre or an article, whatever you want. You're going to read for 10 minutes and think about the questions about independent reading over here to the right. Then use those questions to produce opinions about what you read. Write your opinions on sticky notes or just squares of paper. And then after 10 minutes, reread and write down evidence to support your opinions. You're going to do this three times, so you read for 30 minutes or more. I'm going to model this with the book Dragons in a Bag by Zeta Elliott. Here's picking up where we left off with the last lesson. Mama smiles sweetly and places her palm against the door. She speaks slowly and politely. It's just us, Ma. I called this morning and told you we were coming, remember? The woman behind the door barks at Mama. Of course I remember. You called and asked if you could leave the boy with me, and I said no. If you don't remember, in this story, the mom needs to leave her son with the grandma the son doesn't even really know the grandma, and she seems like she doesn't want him there. The sweet smile on Mama's face doesn't budge. If anything, it hardens. Mama tries to push the door open, but the chain's still on, and my mysterious grandmother doesn't seem ready to move out of the way. I'm going to put a post-it down now. I'm going to look... At that first question, is the story you are reading holding your interest, and why? And I'm going to say, story is holding my interest. And I'm just going to leave it there. Mama puts her other hand on the door frame and leans in so that the woman on the other side of the door and see and hear just how desperate she is. It's only for a few hours. Please, Ma, you're all he has. I step back and wonder if that's really true. I'm sure Vikram would let me stay at his house for a while. His parents like me and I don't have, I don't mind having me around and don't mind having me around. Mrs. Patel calls me a good influence. That's what the grown-ups who know me always say. This mean lady won't even open the door and give me a chance. If she doesn't want me around, it's fine by me. But it's not okay with Mama. She's whispering to the woman behind the door, but her smile is gone now, and there are tears shining on her cheeks. Okay, I'm going to stop reading here, but remember, you need to read for 10 minutes and write down multiple opinions that you have about your story. Then when 10 minutes are up, you go back to the beginning and look for evidence to back up the opinions you wrote down. So let's go back and see if I can find evidence to support my opinion that the story is holding my interest. Hmm. I'm going to say the story is holding my interest because there's lots of family I'm going to add some more detail and say, for example, Mama and Ma are fighting. Ma, Mama is crying. All right, let's get reading. Thank you so much for being here, and we will see you next time.